Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me for another exciting episode of Breaking Bitcoin Market Update. Of course, I am your host, Justin Wise, lead analyst and senior mentor at KrakenCryptocurrency.com. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day wherever you happen to be tuning in from. Of course, today is June 6th, 2019, the foul year of our Lord. And again, interesting day in the markets this afternoon anyways, this morning coming in. Good morning, guys. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be tuning in from. And I want to say hello to Curtis Dubitat, Bitcoin Millionaire, Turd Ferguson, Ron Legato, Dubitat. What's going on, guys? Good to see you. I want to thank all the supporters and everybody who's been coming by lately. If this is your first time to the channel, make sure to subscribe to the channel with the notification bell because YouTube does not like crypto traders. And so if you don't hit the bell, you probably won't get notified. And shout out to everybody watching across YouTube, Twitch, DLive. Facebook Live, and of course, over on the Roku channel at the Investors News Network. All right. Adult onset diabetes, here I come. Yep, this is why we eat keto around the Wise household. So overall consolidation, guys. You know, things like this, uh, there are certain elements that are very indicative of whether something is consolidation, uh, of which way the market's going to trend. And in general, with the exception of a few pumps, uh, ZERP comes to mind, for example, uh, ZERP comes to mind. Uh, with the exception of a few pumps, overall, the market is in a consolidation phase. Most altcoins are red, actually slow bleeding out. There are a few altcoins that are performing quite well. And this is all just natural of consolidation. Now, typically, you're going to get more bearish activity from the altcoins when Bitcoin is consolidating beneath the baseline as it is doing right now. Rudy LaPlan, good to see you over there on DLive. So typically, when price, uh, you have to understand that altcoins follow Big Daddy Bitcoin always. It's always been that way. It always will be that way. Most likely this uncoupling thing that is unlikely to happen as long as Bitcoin, as it should be, is essentially the reserve currency of the cryptocurrency markets, right? That's exactly what it acts. Just like the United States dollar acts as the reserve currency for worldwide international transactions and the overall global economy, you have to understand that Bitcoin acts as the reserve currency for the cryptocurrency markets. And it really doesn't matter how much of an enthusiast or a believer you are in one coin or the other. That doesn't change base economic conditions, that everything is pursuant and dependent upon the activities of Bitcoin. Because investors in the market are going to move first on Bitcoin before they move first on on altcoins, and there is far more capital and market cap in Bitcoin naturally than there are going to be in altcoins. So it doesn't really matter what whale or what kind of capital you get in. All you have to do is simply look at the market capitalizations. Is it possible for a large investor to significantly move an altcoin market? Absolutely. But do those investors matter in the grand scheme of things uh, for pushing the entire market cap of the of the entire crypto market cap forward? No, not so much as what investors and traders in, uh, are doing as far as Bitcoin is concerned. So. We always have to keep that preeminent. Now, typically, when Bitcoin is consolidating in a bullish mode, so when we are above the baseline, because that is what denotes bullishness or bearishness here at Kraken Cryptocurrency, when Bitcoin is bullish or moving up, then altcoins are typically going to also be bullish and moving up. Not typically at the first go through. So if Bitcoin is breaking out of consolidation, typically you're going to see altcoins slow bleed out. But you're going to see a massive dump. They're going to slow bleed out as individuals offload some of their altcoin positions to buy back into Bitcoin. Uh, and then typically you're going to see altcoins fall along with Bitcoin. Another opportunity that altcoins can have to have bullish expansion is when Bitcoin is bullish and consolidating sideways. So when we are above the baseline and consolidating, either after a expansion to the upside or after a recent recent movement to the downside. That's when you're going to see altcoins make their move. You are going to see altcoins make a move when Bitcoin is bearish, i.e. breaking down below the baseline or closing below the baseline and consolidating. But typically, as we are seeing today overall, you're going to see more slow bleed out than small bleed out. You're always going to see some coins are going to pump, some coins are going to dump. But overall, you can see that the majority of the altcoin market cap is slow bleeding out with few exceptions. So with that being said, if you guys have any questions, comments, make sure to throw the, I always get it wrong. It's over here. Yes, the chat is right here. And I've made a few structural changes to the OBS. So hopefully you guys like it. We're going to see that, I guess, uh, here when we go along. Uh, there's also this uh, pretty neat thing here. So I got a hungry ASIC down there. So anytime anybody does anything, you should see uh, you should see something pretty cool there. My question, good to see you over there on Twitch, my good friend. All right. So with that being said, let's get into the charts and break this stuff down. All right, so here we are at the live scene, guys, and hopefully this is good for you. Uh, I made a couple changes, and I decided to go ahead and put the charts mostly up there because some people uh, don't see things very well when I open up the data window. Is it going to be a tiny bit smaller? Yes, but ideally you'll be able to see more clearly exactly what it is that I'm talking about. So let's pop open Bitcoin, and let's talk about the different time cycles and what we're looking at right here. So I did want to break this down and talk about this briefly. We are consolidating at the lower end of our of our medium, of our middle 
order block that we broke through, okay? This was a bearish order block. You can see we talked about this previously, the way that price action occurred or the way that price action conducted itself when we reached this order block. If we go back in time, we can see how this order block was formed. It is formed right here by the last up candle in a bullish cycle before shift in market structure that led us to lower highs and lower lows as opposed to the higher highs and higher lows that we were experiencing on this movement to the upside right here. Of course, this was back in July of 2018, and this was really our last bullish run before or overall consolidation and then the dump to the upside. You could consider this a bit, but actually one of the analysis that I did and posted back at that point in time was the lower, uh, obviously it doesn't take a genius to see this, but there are there were certain mathematical for, uh, equations not equations, that's the wrong word. There was, there, there was there was math and so far as how high price was going relative to the others. Those who trade Fibonacci will be very excited to see, will, will be very excited to know that it was pursuant to Fibonacci. Does that mean that it's a valid way to trade in my opinion? No, because that is reversal trading. We don't reversal trade here. We trade the way that current price is moving. We do not try to take current price the opposite direction because statistically price is far more likely to continue in the direction of the dominant and current trend than it is to switch direction. So, Anyways, moving right along, what do we see here? Uh, we are at the, we were at this bearish order block that was generated right here. And Web Dev Newbie, thank you so much for the subscription over there on YouTube. I can't believe it's been so long. You've been watching the show every day, but good to have you on the team, man. Uh, so we were, um, okay. So we had a bearish order block. Price came up to the bearish order block. What happened? We hit the very top boundary of that order block once, pulled back down to the daily baseline, actually broke below the lower boundary of the order block, and then broached back and above, held the lower support, and then had bullish expansion. So that's actually what we were talking about over here. This is our second order block that was prior, that was higher than the current order block that we had already blasted through. So typically when we're dealing with order blocks and levels of resistance, the way that that would typically work, as we saw in the previous example, is that price did go up and touch the upper boundary of the order block as denoted by that top cyan dotted or dashed line right there. Price pulled back, broached the lower boundary, hit the baseline, made another attempt to close up into the baseline, forming a lower high, actually, just as we saw over here, a slightly lower high. Uh, and then I was expecting price, again, if price had... Uh, had, had continued. And again, this isn't actually the trade setup that I was using, but just in talking about analysis, there's a difference between analysis and trading. So analysis is useful to give us things to talk about, to look for ways that price might evolve. But again, when we get down into our actual trading and execution, those of you who have been watching the show for a while know that we do things a certain way here. We only trade during a certain time of day. We only trade certain setups. Our entire strategy and system needs to give us the go ahead. And honestly, our strategy has almost little to do with analysis and only anything to do with actual data and facts. If the data isn't there, if our indicators are not giving us a signal in a setup, then we simply do not act. So moving on, uh, price did break down below the baseline on this candle. Obviously, as you guys know, that's when I sold my BTC into USD and Tether, and I opened up a 1x short and then opened up a full risk short uh, and then hedged the, the, the remainder of my position um, on the close of the candle two days ago. So right here. So in a short right now on that, I'm actually in just slight drawdown on that actually. Same with Ethereum and, and same with Zurich to be quite honest with you. But anyways, that's just that's just how trading goes, guys. It doesn't matter. One individual trade doesn't matter. Uh, I've been doing analysis, uh, you know, so I've been doing the compiling of May's results because I actually go down and write uh, in, in the moment. I do it for myself, obviously, as well. But in the moment, I go down and write the actual results of position size, you know, based on percent of equity per position size, and then calculate everything out that way. So you guys have to understand that when you're actually measuring your results as a trader, uh, you're going to see a lot of uh, non-relevant data posted up, right? You're going to see this all across the planet, right? Uh, you're going to see Forex traders talking about um, that they get 2R on their trades, right? People are going to measure their success in terms of how much they make com compared to how much they risk. Uh, but if you ever hear that, you should probably run in the opposite direction because saying that you made 2R on a trade doesn't mean anything. There's only one number that matters at the end of the year and at the end of each month, and that's return on equity, right? That's all that matters. So to 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 determine that, all you need to do is take the actual P&L of your trade, how much dollars you made or lost, and divide that number by your total starting capital at the beginning of the trade. That is going to give you your return on equity, right? So that's just going to tell you at the at the end of this trade, right? So there was an entry, there was an exit, there was take profits, maybe there was a stop loss, we laughed, we cried, stuff happened. But all that matters at the end of the day is the number, right? Because this is a game of statistics, right? Did you make money? Did you lose money? And if you made money or lost money, what was that amount relative to the amount of equity that you invested and to the uh, and really the idea of 2R or anything like that? Again, I don't use risk ratios because I don't like the idea of missing out on trends and 
but I, got, I, I digress. So um, the the numbers that matter, the only thing that matters really uh, to, to me, to a professional and to anybody else that knows anything about math is your return on equity uh, and then position sizing appropriately based upon your risk. Now, risk is important. You, you have to determine risk. Before I ever enter into a trade, uh, again, you guys know how I do my thing. It takes me about an hour a day to trade. So I go out and I determine a battle plan. I identify all the pairs that I want to enter into a position on after I've already updated all my currently open positions. And then following that, I go through, I go to my calculator and I calculate out exact position sizes for all the trades based upon where I'm entering, based upon where my stop loss is, also based upon how much of my account I currently have at exposure. And based on that, how much remaining capital I have available to allocate to new risk. Okay. So this is just a necessary part of any professional trading setup. If you are not doing this, you are likely not going to get the results that you want at the end of the year because professional traders, this is where they sit. Most people think professional trading is, you know, really exciting and fast paced and, and enjoyable and all that. And, and sometimes it can be, but more often than not, when you get to a certain tier of trading, right, where you are just concerned about preserving your capital over time and, and slow growth, and not losing the capital that you have amassed, which is often going to be your retirement fund or money that you're trading for uh, institutions or other individuals, investors. Um, then, kind of lost my train of thought there for a second, and that happens when I spitball really fast. So TLDR, anyways, to sum that up, the, ma the number that matters is your equity. Right? You, you, okay, what I was going to say is that uh, I spend more time inside of a spreadsheet than I, than I really spend than anything else because that's all that that's what it really comes down to is how much am I risking? What is my return based upon this risk? Uh, you know, what is my total account balance? What is the amount of my balance that I have available to allocate to new risk? And how do I want to position size that? Up? Obviously, we have different ideas. You can take a full risk trade. Uh, but if you're putting on a lot of trades, often you're not going to want to do that because then if every single trade hits the stop loss, for example, there are going to be times in the market where you're going to get a lot of signals. And so you want to be taking all those trades if possible. But then it comes down to how do you diversify risk? Okay, well, of course, we have discretion that we can apply. So say we get 15 signals. Okay, we can take 15 trades. There's nothing wrong with that. But we're not going to take 15 full risk trades. Uh, now, we ideally could, technically could, uh, if, if we have access to leverage for all those trades, right? So uh, when we come over into cryptocurrency, we do have to position size slightly differently, especially when we're trading on a platform like Binance or Bittrex or, uh, or, or if you're using a regular spot exchange, because you're not going to have access to leverage, okay? You're not going to typically have access to leverage to trade all the pairs that you want to, even with the, uh, and again, I haven't actually been on the Binance decks yet, uh, so I'm not, I'm not 100% sure as how as to how they're doing everything. I don't really feel like being the first in, especially with the amount of capital that I trade. I don't really feel like being the first in to be the test subject for their platform, right? I'll I'll probably honestly it'll probably be a year before I move on there. I'll let all the bugs get fixed out, let all the leverage get fixed, and you know, in chess the pawns go first. So if you're over there trading, that's absolutely fine. Uh, you know, it's nothing that I would be against throwing a little bit of small capital on there and just kind of playing around. But as far as like moving a, a huge position over there, no, absolutely not. It's just not it's just not there yet, right? I I don't want to have to spend time um, worrying about the things that are really so important. So like where my stop loss is, where my trade is, adjusted risk and, all, and, and things of that nature. So I just don't want to be messing with those things later on because they're they're so, so important, right? Uh, the things that you can mess around is discretion as far as entry and exit. You don't want to be messing around or worrying about things like risk and stop loss and and uh, and things of that nature, right? Uh, and, and just to be 100% frank with you, right? If you're not doing that, right? If you're not keeping a trading journal, if you're not calculating your risk pr before each trade, you're likely not going to be here in two or three years. You're just not. I mean, the, bur the burnout rate, the failure rate for traders is extremely high, and that's because they do not respect the statistical nature of this game. They, they, they really want to think that they're going to be able to conquer the market based on their own will and intellectual power <laughs> in isolation. And it's, it's, just, it's just an unrealistic goal, guys. It's just an unrealistic goal, right? I'm not smarter than the market. It's very difficult for me to, you know, most traders, it's very difficult to predict the market on a consistent basis. Uh, this is why the idea of oracles or pickers or anything like that is, is kind of ridiculous. It's a game of statistics. It's a game of odds. And the more that you hone your statistical edge over time by either incorporating these elements in your trading or making them the basis of your trading, um, the more, the better results you're just going to have at the end of the year, right? The better results you're just going to have at the end of the year. Otherwise, you're just gambling. If you're not taking, again, every trade I take is strategic. Uh, I, my entire system has to agree to allow me to take a position. I only trade at a certain time of day, and I only trade certain setups. If those things aren't correct, I don't take a trade. It's called discipline, right? And discipline is what breeds success. There is freedom through discipline, right? Uh, and this is why um, Ichimoku, for example, is a really good 
uh, trading strategy, right? If you guys go look at my Ichimoku CC trading one, or excuse me, trading crypto 101 video on Ichimoku, uh, typically one of the biggest pieces of advice I, I'm going to give to traders is the Ichimoku because uh, it is a full fledged system that is going to keep you from taking bad trades and generally get you into right trades. You have to be disciplined, guys. And this is why I only trade a certain time of day. I only trade certain setups. I only do things a very specific way because that is how I'm able to have success. And that is my edge in the market. So moving right along, uh, that was kind of a long pronounced drawn out talk about in general professional trading. Um, so let's talk about a few things right here. Now, uh, price breaking down below the baseline. So we are in bearish aspect. If we look at what Minx is doing right now, Minx on high momentum traveled well below the zero line and well below our noise line. So we are still in shorting territory. We're only looking for shorts, only interested in taking shorts. Any longs that were taken yesterday in haste, we're losing trades. Uh, you are now back at break even, most likely getting out of your trade. I would expect this to have more follow through and downside. Uh, but we, uh, but again, I'm not going to be surprised by consolidation, maybe a few pops back up to the baseline to test. And again, should price break the baseline and I get a signal to go long, well, then we'll be back to the races, right? Anything can happen. I'm not stubborn in my thoughts. I trade the way that current price is going, right? Current price tells you what you need to know. Not anybody's opinion, not anybody's analysis, not the Bollinger Bands, not Fibonacci, not waves, harmonics, patterns, bullshit, trend lines. None of that stuff matters. It's all, it's all nonsense that is designed to teach you a way to trade that does not have a high statistical rate of success when repeated over and over and over and over again, okay? And that is what trading is. It is a grind. It is literally mechanical mechanically, robotically, repeating the same setup with calculated risk over and over and over and over again, so that at the end, you get the end result, which is extracting profit from the market, buying low and selling high, selling high, buying low, if you are um, shorting. So now there are ways and aspects in which you can make money in other ways in the market, right? There are There is profits to be made, and sometimes what I call gambling the market. But your failure rate is going to be extremely high and you are most likely not going to be here at the end of the year. And by the way, I just want to make this clear because a lot of people, I get comments sometimes that are like, oh my God, you're so against this stuff. It's like you think that if people don't trade like you, they suck. No, absolutely not. Again, one of the traders that I respect the most and who is on our team utilizes things like Fibonacci, utilizes things like RSI. Now, he is able to achieve success from using those things when I've seen 99% of other people absolutely burn out. So I have nothing but respect and admiration for him. And if you are also one of those individuals who is at the end of each year, at the end of each month on average, generating more return than you are losing, then my hat is off to you. In fact, I have nothing but respect for you and I wish you the absolute best. I don't think you need to change a thing, right? If you are able to achieve success from utilizing tools that the majority of individuals use and are not able to utilize them in a, in a constructive or efficient fashion, then congratulations. You are doing amazing and you have achieved a, a, a Rain Man level tier of efficiency and, and success in the market. But that's very difficult for most people to do. And I make my videos and I talk about trading strategy for the majority of people because the majority of people can actually do quite well if they just incorporate discipline, strategy, and patience into their trading system, right? But most individuals will refuse to do that, will kick and scream and fight and, and, and bitch, and they won't get the results that they want and they won't change anything. And generally the answer is to, hey man, just go back to step one and let's start with position sizing, risk management. Let's talk about money management because that um, entry and exit is the third most important thing, period. Entry and exit, you can have the best trading system in the absolute world, the best trading system in the world. And I will take a okay one. And, and if you have poor money management and I have my money management, I will beat your pants off every single time. Every single time I will have a higher equity curve than you because at the end of the year, money management is what all professional traders focus on the most in exclusion to almost everything else. Secondly is psychology, which is just line step. It's another word for discipline, right? Doing the same thing over and over again and not allowing you and not letting yourself deviate from your system. Now there is discretion that can be applied to trading, uh, but that discretion needs to be rules-based, right? There are two types, there's three types of trading, right? There is... <clears throat> There is mechanical, there is discretionary rules-based trading, and there is also intuitive trading. Now, intuitive trading does not have a high failure, does not have a high success rate. Intuitive trading generally sucks, so I don't even consider it uh, friggin' free. Thanks so much for the follow over there on Twitch, my good friend. Welcome to the community. Um, uh, mechanical trading has the highest rate of success, uh, and discretionary rules-based trading is does have an okay. Uh, if applied appropriately, you can have an okay level of success. All right, uh, most individuals who attempt to bridge the gap, though. You have to start at mechanical 
in my professional opinion. You have to start at mechanical. You have to develop the discipline, the patience, the structure to trade a certain way before you begin applying discretion to your rules. And this is why, as I tell almost all my students, uh, when they ask, you know, they, they, they come, I get messages. Uh, that's what I do for most of my day is just answer messages from my students. And they say things like, hey, you know, can I do this? And the answer is no. No, you can't. No, you can't. Because if you have to ask the question, then idea, and then I, I don't want to like sound like I'm a Nazi or anything, but uh, you know, the, the reality is that if you have to a ask a question in the mechanical phase of your trading cycle, then th the answer is no, because we already have rules. We already have structure. We already have exactly the way that we do things. And we don't deviate from that. And you don't start deviating because once you justify to yourself that it's okay to do this small thing over here, then you're just going to start justifying other things to yourself. And again, that's just part of discipline, whether it's diet, whether it's relationship, whether it's, you know, personal growth and development. Discipline is just the way that it is, guys. Discipline equals freedom. Discipline equals freedom. So anyways, um, Bitcoin having a nice movement to the downside right now, which is good because I'm actually watching up on my screen and I'm actually not in drawdown whatsoever on my Bitcoin position whatsoever. Just as we were talking, we started off the show uh, and I was about, uh, I was about, yeah, well, I was a little bit in drawdown and now absolutely flat on my Bitcoin position. So cool, patience, the higher time frame trade, those are the trades that I take. So we just wait and we patiently wait for the charts to either uh, generate a take profit signal or to tell us to exit a trade either at a small win, a small loss, doesn't really matter. We just can continue to repeat the same thing over and over and over again. And what happens at the end of the year, just like the same thing has happened at the end of every other year that I've been a professional trader, money. I have more money than I started with and that's what matters and typically beat the market every single year. So that's the goal, to achieve alpha and maintain discipline. That's it. All right, so uh, looking over here on Bitcoin, all right, price consolidation, all right? Price is currently trading at around 77.12. Um, let's go down to, uh, actually, sorry, that's, that's, not actually, that's not actually correct. Price currently trading at 76.68. Uh, so let's go down to the lower time frames and see if we do have any entries. But I just wanted to note that Wadatar is telling us to be absolutely flat. Uh, there actually is no short signal right now on the close of this candle because as we can see, using Wadatar as a primary or as an initiator, we can actually see our explosion line falling off. Previously on these candles right here, we did get a nice signal from Wadatar and right here as well. Uh, whereas Minx did give us the signal to go short on the close of the, uh, the 3rd of June candle right here, which is the position that we're in and taking. Uh, so let's go down to the 12 hour chart and see if we have anything here. 12 hour chart would have actually given us again, the signal to go long from Minx on this candle right here. That would have been a good trade so far. Uh, Wada Atar gave us the signal actually one candle later because we are waiting for the explosion level to rise, which we do not have on the close of this candle. We have it on this candle. So Minx actually getting us into our positions earlier. Uh, now, again, I've back-tested jumping the gun because one of the questions that I got after yesterday's stream from about three people was, hey, man, why are you using Minx as an indicator uh, as your initiator? And it seems like Wada Atar is actually getting you in earlier. So to answer the question, long story short, I've back-tested, again, what I have done, what I have done with a grand amount of my time for the past five years is back-test indicators, back-test strategies, back test risk management systems. It's all statistical, guys. I mean, the majority of what I do, I, I mostly live inside of spreadsheets, right? That's that's how my life works. I'm constantly optimizing, constantly tweaking. Uh, the time that I don't spend in spreadsheets, I spend in Pine Editor working on new trading view strategies, working on new trading view testing, manually back testing on top of that, coming up with new risk calculations. That's what I do, right? Uh, I'm not a trained, I'm not a quant by profession. Um, I am a quant by passion, okay? Adam Peabody, thank you so much for the $2 super chat, brother. Uh, and I don't see your question showing up here, man. So highly apologize for that. Uh, something should have uh, activated, man. Oh, there it is, man. Thank you so much, brother, for the $2. I highly appreciate it. Now watch, it's going to drop the little, it's going to drop the, the, there's a hungry ASIC. Bink, bink, bink. Yeah, I made that last night in Photoshop. So hopefully that's amusing for you guys. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll make it a GIF and make the, uh, make the fan spin or something like that every time, uh, every time uh, uh, some Bitcoins are dropped in there. Uh, but anyways, just, just having fun with it. Got to enjoy life, guys. Um, uh, and his question was, uh, I think it was, can you tell us how to set your stop and limit on Binance. Sure, I use three commas. I use three commas.io to trade on 
Binance, uh, and I will not directly trade on the Binance platform. In fact, I've probably logged into the Binance platform like maybe three times this year, uh, but I'm on, I'm literally on three commas every day. I have it open over here on my trading screen. I always have uh, three commas, Bybit and BitMEX open up at all times on my trading computer, which is a, uh, it's a segregated computer. I only do trading on there. Um, it's also where I do a little, uh, other stuff where I do cryptocurrency stuff, but I only do it on there. Uh, it's got a, it's got a, a VPN hardwired in. So there's, there's nothing to do. Everything that I do on other computers is completely segregated. I don't do any personal stuff on there except for separate trading. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I use three commas, uh, highly recommend that it. it's a, it's a fantastic platform. There is a link down in the description, which will save you 10% on your subscription rate. If you are interested in trying it out, they do offer a free trial. Uh, so I do highly recommend that. Uh, you can actually do lots of different things besides setting a take profit and stop loss simultaneously. You can set a trailing buy. You can set a trailing take profit. You can set a trailing stop. Multiple take profits in advance. It's nice. Couldn't live without it, man. All right. So bringing back up OBS. Okay. Uh, so uh, getting back to Water Atar, uh, I've back tested utilizing my Water Atar indicator. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, is that Minx actually gives you just more reliable signals, right? Water Atar will get you into trades earlier. If you ignore the rising explosion level rule, which I talk about in my Trading Crypto 101 video, you guys should go check that out in the Trading Crypto 101 playlist if you haven't seen that already. Excuse me. But the, geez. But the reality is through backtesting, it's just very evident to see that Wada Atar, although a fantastic and powerful, great indicator, if you do not uh, implement the rising explosion line tool, um, you're going to have more false signals than you really want to to intend with. Now there, I'm sure there are things, again, any strategy can be, can be complimentary because there are people in the group that are using Wada Atar as their initiator and using Minx as their confirmator. Now that's totally fine. That is their preference. Uh, I don't do it that way. I do it the opposite way, but the fact remains, the fact remains that there are things that you can implement into your PTP strategy that are going to filter out those bad signals. Uh, uh, Ktech Warren, thanks so much for the follow over there on Twitch. Uh, there are going to be things that you can implement into your system. Uh, and actually now, I was kind of waiting for that because the last individual that uh, uh, that super chatted had a really long name. And that's fine. Shout out to you, Philip. Now I can... Uh, sorry. Now I can, Now I can get a little bit cozier in here. There we go. Hopefully that's a little bit clearer now. Yeah, let's slide that over just a little bit. Okay, good. Looks good. So yeah, thank you guys for all the support. Highly appreciated. Nerding out. Nerding out on OBS. Okay, so. Yeah, so uh, Minx j just back tests better. Minx back tests better than most indicators that I've ever used. Uh, and that's why I developed it. It took a lot of time. I've been working on Minx for a long, long time. And it replaced time transformation, which I've been using for about a year. So looking forward to many, many profits with Minx. Anyways, 12 hour. 12 hour told you to go short on this candle right here. Actually told you to go ahead and take profit or reduce risk on this candle right here, which was a good trade. So from here to here is about a 3% trade with leverage that is a good trade. Again, leverage doesn't matter. It's the position size that matters. So ideally, you are going to be putting on a uh, pursuant risk. Now, let's see if you would hit your take profit on that trade. Pull up Rodrigo. And let's see, we got a take profit here. We do hit a take profit there. We don't hit take profit two, all right? So we're already, we've already hit take profit one, uh, and we are out of our position on the 12-hour chart, and you're looking for another signal on the 12-hour uh, to be going along. You will, you will get one here. It's probably going to take you until 7 o'clock tomorrow morning to actually get one, to be quite honest with you. All right, so, and that's my time, so don't, uh, if those times don't make sense, that's absolutely fine. Uh, you actually got told to go short on the 8-hour chart right here on this candle, uh, which would have been good. You would hit take profit one, you'd hit take profit two, and you would hit take profit three. So that's a fully successful trade. Entry on the close of this candle would have got you about 9.68%. And then if you had any questions, actually, this is a nice down candle, and you're told to exit right here. So pretty much at the bottom, Minx gets you out of the trade. Uh, Six-hour chart as well. You do get the signal to short on this candle right here. Uh, you would have all three take profits. The eight-hour would actually have been a more profitable trade. So 7.50, and then you would have 
gotten the signal to exit right here. And while I'm talking about uh, price and trading, guys, so let me take it just a brief divergence here and talk about a series that I really like. Uh, but I watched the first episode of the new season last night, and it was god-awful. And I'm talking, of course, about Black Mirror. Okay, now Black Mirror is one of the best shows on TV, right? It's one of the best. It's not on TV. It's on Netflix. Black Mirror is absolutely fantastic, right? Uh, especially the first, like, three or four seasons. Uh, the, the first three seasons. The first two seasons are absolutely immaculate. Uh, three, four, and five... They're pretty, they're, I mean, they're really damn good, right? There were a couple episodes that are kind of hit and miss. Uh, but season five, I only watched the first episode last night, starring, for the love of God, Miley Cyrus, right? It's a god-awful episode, right? There is no value to watching it. The characters were good, okay? So so characters make story. So the characters were pretty good. Uh, I'm not going to lie that. Even uh, kind of Miley Cyrus, whatever, but but the, the two girls, fantastic characters. And that's what makes a good story good, right, is focus on the characters and actual development of plot. Or excuse me, actual development of the characters and making you feel like you are them and you would react like they would in the situation. But, but, uh, but the plot is so stupid, right? Black Mirror made its name on really making you think and profound things that wrench your gut because of plot twists and everything like that and really making you think profoundly about the way that humans interact with technology. There was none of that, man. It was cliched, trite. It was dumb. It was, uh, it, it was, a, it was a boring story. It was a terrible episode. It was a terrible episode. Now, because I love Black Mirror, I'm going to give episodes two and three a shot. There's only three episodes in the new season. So I will give them a shot. Hopefully they're better. But if they're as trite and stupid as episode one, it, I mean, I'm sorry, but it's going to be the end of Black Mirror. Don't get me started on Game of Thrones. All right. So anyways, um, on the four hour chart, uh, of course, Bitcoin giving us the initial signal to go along pretty much on the first candle that broke the baseline. And we wouldn't have actually exited here. This is good. Even though we open above, we do end up closing below. And this is good. This is a really good trade. Four hour obviously gave us all four take profits. That was about a 5% trade. So of course, the lower time frames that you go down to, your, your targets are going to be closer to you. Uh, continuing right along, you would have gotten a take profit on your short here, take profit on your short here, and you actually got a continuation short on the close of the last four-hour candle, which was a pretty good signal. So just bounce right back up to the four-hour baseline and rejection, right, which is typically what we're going to get uh, on this. And of course, this is a continuation short, so you don't need volume to confirm, so things are quite good, even though volume is quite high. So that's that's actually pretty, pretty good. Yeah, the Star Trek episode of Black Mirror was the best. Uh, the one that is actually my favorite Black Mirror episode is the episode about the cookie where the two guys are in the shed or the shack like in the middle of the winter and the guy starts talking about how he is a professional pickup artist that would train uh, other pickup artists and then they were watching the pickup artist that he was training get basically murdered by this crazy girl and then... Uh, and then, you know, he starts asking the other guy about his story, come to hear the sob story about how his daughter was taken from him. At the end, come to find out it's not his daughter. And because of his actions, the girl died. Uh, and then the guy pulls himself out and you come to find out he's actually an, basically an artificial intelligence or a static copy of that guy's mind inside of a small device. And then they leave that consciousness in there and they turn the dial up so that every second is like a thousand years and they leave him over the weekend and then the episode just ends like that. And they leave the radio on playing this horrible garbage tune from the 40s that's torture. I mean... That is profound, right? And really made me think about consciousness. I mean, uh, stuff I've thought about since I was 13, to be quite honest with you. But, man, uh, you know, Soma, there's a, I don't play video games, but there's a, I've watched uh, the reviews and watched my son play Soma. That touches on that same concept as well. Copy and pasting consciousness is not cut and pasting consciousness. Topics that mankind has to talk about and deal with. But, honestly, they're emotional concepts. So getting down to a little bit of lower aspects here on, uh, I'm looking to see if we have any trades right now. So starting off on the four hour, as we said, we did have a continuation short signal on the close of the last four hour candle uh, and a primary short signal on the close of the last three hour candle, but that was not a trade we would have taken. In fact, we did get a three hour long signal, which was just an immediate uh, collapse. So this is typically why we do not, and of course, we're not going to be taking longs because we're not trading against the higher time frames. Uh, we're not trading against the daily. So we're only looking for shorts, only looking for shorts. One hour has been getting chopped up. So this is, yeah, this is just really nothing that I want to trade in. 
Uh, I don't really like going down to these lower time frames. If I am going to go down to these lower time frames, I prefer the 30 and the 15 uh, because typically price is just going to have more room to move. Uh, like here, here's a 30 minute short. We've already hit take profit one and take profit two and didn't quite hit take profit three. But the 30 is good. The 30 and the 15 will kind of get you into good trades. Not on this one. This one was a little bit of chop. And this one too, this one too, yeah. So I am glad that I do trade that the way that I trade and mostly avoid all of that noise, pain and headache and just trade positionally. So nothing for me to do except hold my short open and wait patiently. Let's go to Ethereum. Going to Ethereum. Uh, and let's hide our lines. Going to Ethereum on the daily, we see the exact same thing. We got to confirm a short signal on the close of the candle of June 3rd. Uh, so on the close of this candle, open of this candle, we did enter into a short position and a little bit of drawdown on Ethereum as well as we continue to move forward here. Uh, so let me actually go over to my Ethereum uh, pair over here on Bybit. Yep, just a little bit of drawdown. Nothing that I'm honestly significantly worried about. Uh, last night was worse. Obviously, last night was worse when we entered the trade here and price goes up. But you have to understand that price would have to close above the baseline for me to start sweating. And again, I wouldn't sweat. It, this trade can go all the way to my stop loss and hit it. I will not feel any way, shape, form, or different. And that is the difference between a trader who trades statistics over time and a trader who is really focused on one trade. And when you focus on one trade, you're going to over leverage, you're going to over risk, you're going to put too much capital in the trade, which is really what it all comes down to. You're just not going to do things uh, the way that you're supposed to do things. I do see here for some reason. You counter is not. over and see if um one second guys uh thank you so much for the subscription mr kanji because i can't read that so it's kanji to me Hmm, not working. Darn shame. I really like that uh, view counter. Oh, well, it's working over here. Interesting. So. Will not be shame. Software. Really? Try this now. Thank you so much, JoJo, for the subscription over there on YouTube. Hmm. Well, we'll just get rid of them then right now until I can figure that part out. Hey man, most things are working. Most things are working. Most things are firing in all cylinders. Anyway, so short on Ethereum as well, signal generated right here. Let's go down to the lower time frames and go to the 12 hour chart. 12 hour chart would have gotten you short right here. Pull back open Quadrigo. Uh, and a little scrunching, scrunch, scrunch, scrunch. So short signal right here, and we've already hit take profit one from the 12 hour signal and out of the position actually right here. So waiting for a little continuation on the 12, that's okay. A winning trade is a winning trade. Eight hour, I think generated the most profit because we did hit take profit one and two, not three yet. The six hour would have given you a fully completed successful trade going short on the close of this candle right here. One, two, and three. Uh, let's see, actually. Yes, three. So did catch it on that wick. And the six hour is going to be signaling a continuation short on the close of this candle as well. On the close of this candle as well. Give this. Okay, anyways. Uh, so we've got about 20 minutes till the close of the fresh six hour candle. So we are getting a continuation short on the six hour candle. Uh, let's see here. Now, this should be a continuation short, but we did close a little bit above the baseline. So we could have taken a short on the close of this four hour candle right here as well. And three hour did give us a short signal on the previous candle. Water does not confirm, volume does. So depending on exactly how your structure is, 
and going down to the 30 minute, 30 minute actually gave you a nice continuation short on the close of the previous candle as well. All right, so overall, you do not wanna be looking for longs on Ethereum. You are gonna be trading against the daily, which you do not wanna be doing. You do not wanna be trading against your higher time frames. Uh, of course, today is Thursday, so there's really no point in looking at the weekly. There's just not enough data there. So with that being said, let's go take a look at traditional markets and Forex, and we'll also look at our long terms. Uh, so let's pull open. Well, let's start with long term. Okay, so obviously, uh, obviously our total crypto market cap is going to look very similar to Bitcoin's price right now, just overall consolidation, bearish consolidation beneath the daily baseline. So no longs to be taken. Again, uh, market cap is holding up nicely, but again, we just have to compare this. We're not, we're not looking at this as a tradable asset because this is not anything that we can, let's just this up a little bit, uh, because this isn't something that we can trade as we would trade, um, you know, an asset. Uh, the only purpose of looking at this is going to be as a leading indicator. Uh, and some people say, <clears throat> well, why don't you look at it as a line chart? Well, you can. But again, since we don't trade really support and resistance, uh, there's really no purpose in doing this, although we uh, that's not that's that's actually a misnomer. Uh, so what is the trend? What is the Heikinashi trend of the total crypto market cap? It's actually bearish, right? So the total crypto market cap, we are in the bearish phase. What does that mean? Uh, potentially discretionary position sizing when you're putting on your altcoin trades. Potentially, you want to reduce your risk if you're going to be taking uh, altcoin trades to the long side, right? There are schools of thought in PTP. There are schools of thought that you simply do not take long trades when the total crypto market cap is bearish or whatever your underlying fundamental indicator is, right? Now, for me, I don't utilize that strategy, but I do know people that I've trained who are students of mine that do have good success utilizing that. Uh, so let's go look at the longs and shorts ratios and talk about a little bit of that nuance. We are having a few more longs being put in. People are attempting to buy the bottom. Again, you are always going to naturally see this. And these are the individuals that can eventually push price into a bearish trend. But does that mean that we're going to follow right along with them? Absolutely not. Let's look more specifically and look at what the longs are doing. Longs are actually, well, excuse me, the longs and shorts ratios is dropping off, which means that shorts must be dropping off faster than longs. Okay. And again, indicative sign of consolidation, as somebody said yesterday, so succinctly, when you see longs and shorts getting wrecked, that is signs of consolidation. So shorts are taking profit. That's why shorts are reducing. Uh, shorts are reducing. Longs are exiting their positions. And so again, we're just not really seeing the strong buying capital necessary to come in. So I do want to walk back to things that I said a few moments ago, because I would have assumed from that, that there were longs coming in. Now, of course, that doesn't really detract away from the fact that, of course, we're seeing people buy the bottom. You're always going to see people buying at any and all prices. And of course, the people who do buy the bottom can initiate price appreciation and bullish expansion to the upside. But does that mean that that is a winning strategy? No, it's just a natural occurrence of the market cycle. But we leave that to the speculators, not to the traders. All right. So looking forward into the BTC CME futures, again, looking very similar to Bitcoin's price. Actually, if I had to put a little bit of an odd on this, I would say that it actually looks a little bit healthier than Bitcoin's price, which is natural. There's a lot of liquidity here. Um, uh, but it's still bearish, right? So confirm short signal on the close of this candle. Again, you're right around break even right now. Currently, you're in a little bit of drawdown last night and for a little bit of this morning as well, but things are kind of now evening out. Uh, retrace, correction, pullback, back up, not pullback, but correction, back up to the uh, daily baseline and so far rejection. Wadatar is still confirming bearish short activity. Um, hey, Lydia, good to see you. So it's good to see that the Discord uh, chat is working. So guys, if you uh, if you are in our Discord, if you guys would like to participate a little bit more intimately with the show, you guys can, of course, go to discord.crackingcryptocurrency.com and hop on the live stream channel down in the general chat section. Uh, and you can interact directly with the live stream. So good to see you. Uh, and for some reason, that's actually pulling up my... Uh, it's totally fine. You guys can't do anything with it. Uh, but it's pulling up my uh, code discriminator. So if you tag people in here, interestingly enough, I wonder if this works. Uh, I probably won't work directly through Restream. Yeah. No, I'm going to have to go and do it in Discord. Any hoosers, uh, let's go over to uh, to BTC futures. So uh, BTC futures looks good. Very little volume. Nothing really that generally we want to be we want to be positioning off of. Again, the signal was here where there was volume, and what does that volume entail? That there is actually volume and momentum to generate a new trend to the downside. 
Uh, let's go look at GBDC. GBDC looking significantly less healthy. So investors are a little bit scared. Your more traditional investors are scared. You can see that the bottom was attempted to be bought up. That was the wrong move as price just has turned back around and hit them squarely in the face. So again, we do not trade against the higher time frame direction. Uh, looking at BVOL 24 hour, BVOL is moving to the downside, making day trading less and less attractive. Now we are still above three, so we are still within tradable territory. Typically when BVOL is below three, it's not really anything that we wanna be trading in. You guys can go back and rank this historically and just go see if those were any situations in which you really wanted to trade. What does low volatility lead to? As we can see here, where does volatility start dropping off? This is November of 2018. Look how volatility drops down and drops down and drops down and drops down. And basically we get big spikes of high volatility, which is just those massive candles to the downside. Uh, but typically, this is going to be your good indicator. This is going to be very similar to trading VIX, if you guys are familiar with that. Drew Talati, thank you so much for the $2 super chat, my good friend. He says, smart money going into XRP, man. Well, XRP does typically counter reversal trade uh, BTC. Let's go into Bitcoin dominance. Uh, BTC dominance continues to, I mean, just bleed and list lazily down to the left. So really nothing indicative of that. Again, this is typically good for altcoins. Uh, but at the same time, we have to realize that Bitcoin is below our daily baseline. So we want to be taking a little bit of less risk anyways. And overall, what have we seen from the altcoins? Nothing really dramatic except for XRP, which is putting in some nice bullish momentum to the upside. Looking at Tether dominance, Tether dominance continues to rise, which again is the most important leading indicator <coughs> Excuse me, of, uh, of market unhealthiness, right? So Overall, definitely want to be cautious right now. Let's go over to the S&P. And again, another leading indicator that is negative for cryptocurrency. The S&P 500 breaking strongly above the daily baseline and generating a buy signal on the close of today's daily candle, wicking and pulling back down to the baseline and completely pulling pulling off of that as well. So this is a nice, strong, bullish signal. Uh, volume is overall low, I would say right now, on the S&P, at least on a Wanda where I trade. But uh, but Wadatar is confirming the signal on today's candle. Uh, and Minx is going to be calling for a long on the s and P, uh, which is okay because we've been basically short this entire time. Uh, looking over at the NASDAQ as well, we do not have the signal to go long yet. So keep an eye on this as well, because this could just as easily be a leading indicator of the S&P and reject easily off the baseline right here. Again, there's no bullish momentum. Uh, we have no signal from Minx. Uh, but and actually, which, but we have to take that with a grain of salt as well, because the, you know, the, the NASDAQ was more, uh, was more bearish in its movement to the downside. Uh, the NASDAQ was more, uh, had more mo momentum to the downside, excuse me. And so it's going to take more time for indicators to reset. DJ Mateo, thank you so, Matoa, Matoa, something like that. Matoa, my Uh Thank you so much for the subscription on YouTube, my good friend. So the NASDAQ is just going to take more time for indicators to reset, for price to reset as well. It's just going to take more breathing room. So, you know, again, this is why we don't really try to predict the market. We think, you know, or we, we don't think we react to the way that the market is currently responding. And we wait for our system and signals to give us an indication to take a position. Nothing on the NASDAQ right now. Looking over at the Dow, the Dow is the most bullish of all the above. It's more bullish than the S&P. And obviously the NASDAQ not really bullish at all right now at this point in time. But again, these do things that do tend to move in lockstep. It's going to be very rare where you're going to see them not move in lockstep except for the purposes of intraday trading down on the one minute, the three minute, the five minute. So um, Dow also giving us a long signal on the close of the day's candle. So basically long signals to go long on traditional equity markets and signals to basically exit cryptocurrency markets or be very cautious with your positions. So this is going to be playing an, uh, an influencing factor on how I'm going to be putting on positions over the next month. So stay tuned. Uh, now, let's go ahead and uh, let's start breaking down uh, FX. And if you guys have currency pairs that you guys would like me to look at or recommend, again, I know that there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of currency pairs that people like to trade. I don't typically look at a lot of the exotic pairs, but I could really beef this up as far as the uh, the few pairs that I am looking at here. Uh, again, there's probably going to be anywhere from 35 to 40 currency pairs that I would normally be interested in actively trading. Uh, but anyways, we'll start off with the euro dollar. Uh, Euro dollar again did signal a long signal on this candle. Uh, we did have a pullback two candles later that came within our qualifying line. And as I've said, where is one place? Where is one place we should always be looking to trade? The only way that we can trade reversals, except for one rare exception, uh, in PTP strategy, is buys at the baseline. Euro dollar coming down to the baseline, 
uh, you know, filling that limit by perfectly and price now currently up. Uh, what was that? 50 pips? 75 pips. That's great. Uh, so 75 pips. Great. Uh, you know, typically when I'm trading Forex, I'm looking for 80 to 120 pips for daily time frame trade setup. Depends on volatility, to be quite honest with you. Uh, you know, over the last what, six, six months, eight months, as I've been looking at the Forex markets, it would have been more closely like maybe 40 to 60, to be honest. And that's why, I mean, we've had, you know, so much bullish expansion in, in cryptocurrency. So a lot of Forex traders have come into cryptocurrency as well because of the lack of volatility in Forex, uh, as you guys can just kind of see. Uh, but now volatility coming back into Forex. Uh, so dollar euro uh, would have been a long signal here. You could have got the pullback or you could have got the pullback to the daily baseline, but either way in a long right now at this point in time, and most likely already hitting your take profit target. Let's actually boot up Quadrigo. We're going to be looking for longs. So yeah, you already would have taken hit your take profit one. Uh, and let's see here on the close this one. So yeah, just move your stop loss to break even down there at the daily baseline. Uh, and closing back below the qualifying line or minx crossing in a static is going to be an early exit on that. But anyways, good scalp, good trip. I uh, did get a continuation short on this candle, probably didn't hit our take profits yet. Uh, but we're actually getting a signal to exit on this candle, which will just give us a slight bit of profit, probably just at 21. Oh, wait, 14 pips. So that's basically like a day trade, but whatever. Uh, pound dollar. Pound dollar, uh, beautiful short that uh, Minx would have caught on this candle right here. We would actually have been able to go long. Uh, movement to the downside, take profit short here. Another continuation short. Actually here, that one didn't play out. So right here, you would have been out of that trade. Uh, we'll see if we get confirmation because we're not actually getting a bullish signal to go long yet. We'll actually see and wait how this ends up closing. Uh, if, this, if the pound dollar closes like it is today, this actually could be a long. So keep your eyes peeled on that one. Uh, Aussie dollar was along over here. Great trade. Already hit take profit one. Haven't hit take profit two yet. Stop loss at break even. Just being patient. Uh, dollar cab was a fresh short here. And that profit, that trade is now a nice profit. Dollar Swissy was a fresh short here. And that trade's going gangbusters, as we called. Uh, Euro yen, again, looking more bullish, uh, obviously because of what's going on with the dollar right now, evaluated against both the, the yen and the yuan. So let's go to the euro pound. Euro pound called a beautiful long right here. Uh, and actually called a continuation along here that we did call live on stream. We've already hit take profit one on that trade. Two candles later, uh, pull back to the daily baseline. So an opportunity to refuel. We might actually be getting a signal to exit the trade right now. So we'll just be kind of patient on that. Looking at the Kiwi dollar again, Kiwi dollar called along. We could have taken the pullback on the next candle right here. Uh, and things are looking quite well. Uh, let's see here. We have already hit take profit one. CAD dollar called along here about the pullback on the next candle and things are progressing nicely. Uh, dollar Aussie, I think was a short. Yep, short right here. And that trade's going gangbusters so far. Uh, dollar Euro, obviously a short. Uh, dollar Yuan, there's really nothing to do right here. There was a continuation long right here, uh, but you would have been out of the trade here if you're using Minx as an early exit system. Not everybody does. I recommend that they do. Uh, not a really strong signal from the, US, from, from the dollar Yuan. Uh, pound Canadian. Uh, Pound Canadian did give a continuation short on this candle right here, and you are in profit. Looks to be about 15 pips, maybe, give or take. 30 pips, actually, so not bad. Uh, gold, again, gold signaled along here. You didn't really get a pullback, so unless you just were really banking on gold, you likely missed this using Minx, and gold is, a, gold is rallying quite strongly. So we'll just wait for pullbacks. Uh, gold is quite bullish right now, looking at the Zao dollar. Uh, looking at Palladium, uh, Palladium is going to be along on the close of this daily candle. Uh, silver was along on the close of the previous daily candle, and then you had a nice pullback on the next day to actually get you into the trade. So you are in this trade right now. You've already hit take profit one. Your stop loss is at break even. Uh, gold doing quite well. Rhodium commodity uh, was, you get a continuation long actually on the close of yesterday's candle, and you are now currently long. Have you hit take profit one? No, not yet, but you are long on uh, on dollar czar if you're trading on a wand, that's a commodity. Uh, let's go look at uh, GLD. Yeah, gold again, uh, GLD did call along down here looking at the SIBO. So gold did call, call along right here, I apologize. And uh, yeah, uh, up 3.91% just on GLD. So not bad. Let's, I'm actually going to add that one to the watch list. So, 
All right, guys, so there is 4X in long term. It's 12.56, so I'm gonna go ahead and take a brief break, refill my water cup. When I come back, we're gonna take your requests, so please take this time to compile your requests. Uh, there's a couple things, just calls to action, guys. I'd really appreciate it. If you are enjoying the content and you're watching, but you haven't supported the show yet, we'd really appreciate the support. We're here every single day because of awesome people like you. So if you would, please hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, show us some love, whether you're watching from YouTube, Twitch, DLive, or Facebook, give us a subscription, give us a follow, share us around to your family, your friends, even people you don't even like. Highly appreciate that as well. If you could go over to Facebook and Google Business and leave us a review, we'd also highly appreciate that. It helps us come up in the algorithm. So anyways, guys, I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.
All right, and we are back, guys. <clears throat> so we're gonna kick on some soft jazz. And I'm also gonna make sure, because sometimes when I switch back from the BRB screen, we do get this color issue, which we're getting right now. Now that could be my fault, could be my fault, but I will turn off, there we go, auto white balance. I wanna make sure that that's off, because for some reason that doesn't like to stay like that. Don't really understand why that is. Uh, I switched to OBS and I've noticed that using regular OBS as opposed to Streamlabs OBS, which honestly, when you reach a certain level of being able to set up your stream professionally is largely just bloatware. Um, it doesn't really perform the way that you want it to. Regular OBS, in my opinion right now, is, is much better. But uh, still having kind of that issue. But anyways, we're gonna kick on the tunes. Let me know uh, what I need to do with the volume. I'm gonna set, excuse me, I'm gonna set it at negative 45 dB. Uh, I'm muted. Okay. Yeah, let me know if you guys can hear me. Sorry about that. Cool beans. All right, sounds good. All right, let me know if I need to make any adjustments to the music. This is the first time I've, again, this is the first day that we're using regular OBS as opposed to Streamlabs, which I'm very, very happy with it. Uh, Tommy Choo Choo, thank you so much for the follow over there on Twitch, my good man. Welcome to the community. Okay, so all that looks quite good. Oh, and I wanted to go through the chat a little bit. So let's get back over here to the live scene and we will scroll down and answer some questions. Uh, Ricky Thompson says, when you have time, can you go over order block again? Totally get your baseline. Now order block for price moving to order blocks. So typically price is gonna go from support to resistance, resistance to support. It's gonna travel back to periods of volatility. If you're using something like the VPVR, again, the other way to think about it is price likes to go to high volume nodes. Uh, low volume nodes are train tracks. So price goes quite quickly. Uh, price, if you view price as a train, when price is on the train tracks, it moves quite quickly. And high volume nodes, as opposed to low volume nodes, are gonna be train stations. And price typically likes to hang out in train stations for a while. So price is going to move from low volume nodes to, uh, excuse, excuse me, price is gonna move from high volume node to high volume node, consolidate, continue to move to a high volume node, whether that's up or down, doesn't really have a directional bias. VPVR does not give you directional bias. VPVR only gives you help with volatility. Um, so, uh, the way that order blocks work is, and this is, uh, when we get an order blocks, we have to understand that order blocks and trading order blocks are subjective price action analysis. So I have, there's lots of people who, um, Again, order blocks is not a, a very common way to trade. Uh, there are certain schools of trading that make it very, very popular, and this, these are gonna be your price action schools. Again, very popular traders like ICT and Trader Dante uh, teach and talk about order blocks. And originally it was by following ICT that I learned about order blocks and then developed my own concept of trading order blocks. But in general, uh, an order block for me is the last up candle in a bullish cycle, right? Or in a or in in, uh, in bullish market structure, right? So what is bullish market structure? Bullish market structure is a series of higher highs and higher lows. Okay, so you're you, you have a period on the chart where you're experiencing higher highs and higher lows. And then at some point, you're going to get the last up candle before a shift in market structure, uh, where you're going to now start experiencing lower lows and lower highs. So you mark off for me, the true body. So you're excluding the tails the true open and close of that last up candle, that area is your order block. That is your bearish order block where short orders and sells were initiated. And that is the level on the chart where anybody who sold that level is gonna defend their position and this applies to futures markets. Uh, it's also the same psychologically for individuals who sold there on spot exchanges because that's where the mass of selling started. So that was a gr agreed upon price. That was a li liquid price in the market where buyers and sellers thought that price was fair to exchange coins between themselves or to exchange assets between themselves, the, the auction style theory of the market. So, <clears throat> 
So when price attains those levels again, it's gonna act typically as resistance. And when price breaks convincingly above that resistance, well then that area becomes a new demand zone as opposed to a supply zone. So it's gonna become support as opposed to resistance. Once support, once broken becomes resistance, resistance once broken becomes support. So typically the way that you would trade order blocks strategically is that you would look to initiate short sells from bearish order blocks or the last up candle during a bullish market structure before a shift in market structure to initiate bearish market structure, you initiate short orders there and then when price breaks above that bearish order block convincingly you would buy any pullbacks into what is now called a bullish breaker right so when order block breaks it becomes a breaker if you have a bullish order block this is the last down candle in a bearish market structure before a shift in market structure to the upside so you have lower lows and lower highs then you have the last down candle at some point in time and now you're gonna start experiencing higher highs and higher lows uh, consolidation periods don't apply those are not order blocks you have to see a very pronounced V bottom or movement from you don't have to have a v bottom you have to have a very clear uh, sight on the chart of lower lows lower highs leading to higher highs higher lows so you would buy pullbacks into that bullish order block and when broken below very convincingly you would short any pullbacks into that zone or sell any pullbacks into that zone uh, because that's now a bearish breaker right that's the, the way order blocks work uh another uh question that i saw as well is are the different colors for the order blocks or for different time frames no they're just to help delineate it for me on the chart from one order block to the next uh what time of day do i trade i trade the daily time frame so i trade uh, i trade either an hour prior I, I trade either an hour hour prior or an hour after the daily candle close of the day uh jay kreutzer says that's it i know the truth justin is satoshi nakamoto don't tell anybody Shh. Uh, do I trade at a set time of day because it's the time that I'm thinking sharpest or the time the market gives you the best information? Uh, it's the time that the market gives me the best information. Web Dev Newbie says, Justin, do you mind telling us where your system told you to enter into a short position? I think I answered that. At what price did I get confirmation to enter into a short trade? Uh, let me take a gander here. Don't mind sharing that information at this point in time. Over here, check against. Uh, 76, 76.52 was where I entered into my short position on Bybit. And it wasn't the price that gave me confirmation, it was the close that gave me confirmation or the information directly before the close. Adam Peabody asks, I'm sorry, how do you set the dollar amounts on stop versus limit? Um, how do I set the dollar amounts on stop versus limit? I'm not sure I, I understand the question. Uh, you just You just type them in. Uh, if you're asking how to convert BTC price to USD, you just you just divide the, uh, you, you just multiply the the SAT position. So if you're going to enter into a trade on a BTC to altcoin trade uh, or an alt to BTC, excuse me, um, you're going to get a Satoshi value. How many SATs are you spending on the trade? How many Bitcoins are you spending on the trade? And then just multiply that number by the current USD value of Bitcoin. Uh, that's very important for your trading journal. Uh, I've got some requests for LTC USD and LTC BTC. So let's look at those real quick. Let's look at LTC USD and we will look on Coinbase. Uh, LTC USD was a short on this candle right now. You're roughly back at break even right now, but you do have all signals firing. You have great volume on that trade. Wadatar confirms. Minx gives you the short signal. You're closing below the baseline. Uh, so that would have been a trade with the following metrics. Again, it's going to depend on what time you entered, uh, but the candle did close at 102.14. Uh, so you would have taken a trade anywhere between 102.14 and a pullback to the baseline right here. Uh, and you're looking at initial, let's actually pull from the data window. You'd be looking at initial profits of 92.60, 83, uh, 73.50, give or take, with a stop loss around 116, 116.50, give or take. Uh, no confirmation right now. Uh, still, still bearish. You're only looking for shorts on LTC USD, uh, LTC BTC. Uh, LTC BTC was actually a long trade that I entered yesterday, uh, last night, uh, because we can see that the daily candle closes and gives me a continuation long. Minx gives me right here. 
Uh, so currently in an LTC BTC trade. Uh, and price is good. We're above the daily baseline on LTC to BTC. This is often something that we will see. The majors will actually have some good bullish performance um, uh, compared to um, uh, compared to um, uh, compared to Bitcoin because Bitcoin's value against the USD is going down. That means that all coins to Bitcoins are naturally going up in value. Sometimes it depends on the chart. Satoshi Nakamoto Vision. Thank, whoa. Thank you so much for the subscription over there on YouTube, my good friend. Tell us the truth. Uh, but um, Alan Puldo says, was waiting on an entry for AMD stock. Minx didn't let me down. Awesome, man. I heard you talking about, I saw you talking about that last night. Uh, Wayne Tech says, Love, Death, and Robots is another mind-bending series. I love Love, Death, and Robots. I've watched the whole thing. Uh, Light, Rainy. Uh, I think that answers uh, the, I think that answer, the question that you're asking is going to be answered in all the introductory, or in all the information in the Primo group, brother. Jur says, can you recommend any good websites or videos about futures trading? I kind of know what I'm doing now, but also not 100% sure if I'm doing it right. Uh, there's really not a lot of, uh, I'm not aware of any, again, I could be wrong. There could be some good, good introductory stuff out there. I mean, basic information is always going to be helpful. Just do your research, read the stuff that Investopedia says, read the stuff that, uh, you know, I'm not sure if there's information on baby pips, but um, typically good, decent Forex information is going to give you a general understanding of the way the futures contracts work. I have a full introductory session on, or a video, a premium webinar on BitMEX that's available to premium subscribers. And again, you guys had to understand the reason why I started cracking cryptocurrency is because I thought a lot of the education out there was actually quite poor. So uh, I'd be very cautious about what information that you that you take into account. But in general, if it's just basic information, you shouldn't be doing too bad. For example, when you go one X short, you go all in, right? Can you still take a leverage short position when you get a signal or do you have to buy back some Bitcoin to go short after? Yeah, that's a complicated, that that it's not complicated, but there's a couple ways you can do that. Uh, when you go one X short, yes, you do go all in with your position and your position is now hedged. It doesn't matter whether Bitcoin goes up or goes down, your USD value is the same, which is exactly the point of going short is to protect your capital. Um, so what I would say is you have a couple options. You can either have multiple accounts you can move, if you get a signal to take a full risk trade, you're going to exit out of your 1x short, for example, uh, and then move your funds either over to Binance or some other platform where you're going to go into USD or USDT. Uh, you're going to leave the margin on the exchange where you're just going to take your regular full risk position size. Uh, and then that way you don't have unhedged, uh, unhedged capital. Uh, hold on a second, guys. I do have to take this phone call.
All right, sorry about that, guys. I had to take that phone call. All right, um, let's see here. Uh, light rainy. It is, um, it is ATR. It's an, uh, it's actually an RMA relative moving average. Jazz Tronica on Spotify is the bee's knees. Yep. So it's not it's not an SMA. Uh, it's it's an RMA of ATR light rainy. That is a good yeah. That's a good take on it, Ricky. Yes. Asriel, so Matt says, uh, Justin short at the beginning of the continuation short on the Ethereum, uh, on the Ethereum one hour. Ron Paul wallet still sinks right up. Uh, hey, Justin, or uh, my name's Justin, right? So blockchain, uh, Sal Canal. Decentralizado says, hey, Justin, I'm a professional. I am a professional from a not related field. Just started trading. At the moment, I do have only four hours a day to de dedicate to myself. What do you recommend to me? I only trade for one hour a day. Uh, generally, it takes a little bit longer than that with all the extra stuff that I do. Uh, but the method that I teach, the method that we talk about, the method that we utilize, PTP in cracking cryptocurrency, only takes about an hour a day. There's a very specific reason for that. There's specific timeframes that we trade. We have exact rules that we trade. So uh, again, I mean, I know that um, I know it, I sound kind of like a broken record, but I'd be happy to teach you the way that we trade. Uh, the link is at the top of the screen. If you'd like more information or you can DM us in the discord. Um, the other thing that I would do is just focus on in general to give you a more basic option um, is just focus on higher time frame trading and developing a rules based system that is verifiable over time via back testing. I would recommend trading the daily time frame. Go back over to Bitcoin. Go, baby, go. Bitcoin will never, ever go below 7.4K. I will remember those words. Have I seen the BSV order book on the hashtag max volume exchange lately? No, no, nope, I, I don't trade BSV because it's not on any exchange that I trade. I'd be happy to look at it, though. Go, 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 Matt. You're the man, dude. Take it easy, Jay Kreutzer. All right, 122, we got a lot of time left. Let's go look at crypto bubbles. Wow. I remember somebody talking about this BTC2 trash. All right, from $1.27 up 2,284% in a day. 99.5% in the last hour. Massive pump.
Sounds like wishes and fishes. You got that right on. Yeah, pretty red day in the market. Doing pretty good. Uh, as usual, I got uh, most of my positions are green. I got a couple positions that are in drawdown, currently up about 17.31% ROI on the trades that I have on. And I've been paring down my positions. So now I currently only have, actually here, I can tell you guys real quick. Elite row, elite row, that was a lot to manage. One, two, three, four, five, six. Well, lost count, two, four, six, eight. 16 open positions. 16 open positions, one is definitely gonna get dumped tonight. And potentially two, potentially two positions will get dumped. VPVR would be good to use now to find where Bitcoin will find support to bounce or break through since it's dropping. You can use VPVR if you want to trade support and resistance. Uh, again, I'm not really a reversal trader, so that's not, uh, I'm a trend following trader. So the trend is bearish. So uh, I just use, I just use uh, Quadrigo ATR to tell me exactly where I should set my take profits. A couple other systems in there as well to tell me when to exit uh, earlier. Uh, but order blocks, VPVR, support and resistance. As long as you can apply those in a systematic, systemic way, then you'll be okay. Seventy-four ninety-five <laughs> on Bybit up to seventy-five thirty-three. <laughs> Big buyback. <coughs> Excuse me. Jeez. Big sales. Big sales. over here and look at tensor charts wiped out all those longs man wrecked eight point one million longs yeah eight point one million dollars worth of longs liquidated on that wick right there it seems like they learned because then there was only nine point eight thousand very good. Uh, that bubble site is CryptoBubbles.net. I looked at LTC BTC. Uh, I went long on LTC M19 last night. Got the continuation long signal from Minx. Um. F Bitcoin was another coin that I was looking at going long on yesterday because we did get a long signal. Now, I didn't take this trade due to discretion. Obviously, I have discretion as to what positions I put on. I don't have to take every single signal that comes up through my SAN, through my through my scan, through my SIFT every night. I didn't put this one on for discretionary reasons. Uh, between Basically, it was between this one and Litecoin, and Litecoin just had better volume. Uh, as we can see here, Ethereum did not generate the necessary volume to confirm this trade in the first place, even though Wadatar does confirm, so there's a little bit of discretion there. So I just chose not to put this trade on, and I'm glad that I didn't. Have I tried Quadency.com? I have not. Trade on all major crypto exchanges within one platform. Ten supported exchanges, 887 tradable assets, 2,672 trading pairs, 2 million overall trades. Simplify advanced trading and analysis of digital assets no matter where you trade. Now they had me at free account.
What uh, exchanges do they support? Binance, Phoenix, Bitrix, Coinbase, Gemini, Kraken, KuCoin, OakX, and Poloniex. This is only going to be helpful for Binance. Is it better than three commas? Uh, Texas Blues. Uh, you just op so you just open up the data window. So if you look, you can't see it on my stream, but on the very to the very right, you're gonna see icons. So the top one's gonna be watch list, and then you're gonna see alerts. And the third one is data window. If you click that, all of your indicator data is gonna pop open. This is actually, so one common question I get is, hey man, it looks like Minx is crossing the zero line, but I can't really tell. All you gotta do is just go to that bar and, and Minx will tell you if the number, if noise, if VPM is negative, then Minx is below. Update on Metal Bitcoin. Uh, let's see here. Didn't quite hit our take profit. Uh, I'm still in metal, a little bit above our break even right now. Uh, no, no signal to exit the trade yet on the daily, so no update, man. Nothing to do. Young Johnny Three Fam, what's going on, brother? Gap fill, huh? Oh, you're talking about oh, completely filling this gap? Yeah. Possible, man. Yeah, I know. I haven't re-upgraded my, my Tensor Charts plan in a while. Okay, so while I'm sitting here. No, it's only for manual trading, IMO. Well, I, all I do is manual trading. I don't do any automation. So, you know, if if it's if it's better than three commas, great. But the thing that I like about three commas is that I can put a watch only API my BitMEX on there and, and soon buy bit because right now I still have to add Bybit, like my capital in Bybit when I'm doing my overall profit evaluations, which takes an extra like five seconds every night. All you gotta do is go over to assets and boom, there your USD value of your portfolio is on Bybit, it's quite easy. But I digress. Um, but, you know, three commas, it, you know, I, I just like three commas because not only that, I mean, I can set my, I, they got the trailing buy feature, which is pretty neat. It's not really how I trade. The trailing take profit, you can set in advance. Your trailing stop loss, you can set at any time. Your multiple take profits. It's just like a nice, easy, quick interface. Like with my tab key and my mouse, you know, I can, you know, the way that I trade, if I'm putting on like 10 pairs a night, you have to understand that I have to identify my pairs. I have to evaluate my current risk, how much I have available to risk. Then I have to go over to my calculator and determine my position size for each trade. Uh, and then following that, um, I have to get my position sizes, then I have to adjust them based upon weighted risk, then I have to go back out and fill out my, my, my trading journal, then I have to go to the platform and execute, right? So that's kind of a lengthy process, right? But again, I only do that within one window of time. So instead of spreading my day out, you know, my insanity of trading, most people are just like constantly on the charts. No, I just spend one hour working hard and then I just come back and look the next night and whatever happens, happens, that's it. Um,
Like I'll give you guys just like a personal example, right? Like my personal trading, right? Uh, again, May, um, I made uh, I made 46.2 to be precise. Return on my equity, right? So I almost doubled my account in the month of May, okay? Um, and all the trades that I called gave a total profit opportunity, actual return on investment, actual return on equity, 26 to 62%, okay? It depends on how many trades you took. It depends on how you position sized, right? Um, and that's taking every single trade that I recommended, taking every single trade that I took, okay? Um, now, the first week of June, the the percentage ROI of margin is actually negative, I think like negative 25% right now. Um, my actual return on equity this month is about negative 4%. So, so far this first week of, of June, I've lost about 4% of my account. That's okay. That's okay. It's actually the first first week. And again, it doesn't matter until the end of the week. And I don't calculate things based on weeks. I, I look at the end of the month. Um, so, you know, again, I haven't had it, haven't closed a month out in the red since uh, November, but it happens naturally. I mean, you're going to have losing streaks happen to the best traders. Uh, and it's not really a losing streak. It's just the propensity of the market to turn in a different direction. But the, the important lesson that I'm trying to share here is doesn't matter, guys. Doesn't cause me any discomfort. Doesn't cause me any discomfort when I blowed up my terminal last night. And as I have been for the last, I don't know, like three or four days, uh, closing out more losing trades than winners. It's generally aberrant behavior and it's going to be, it's just going to happen. It's a statistical game of, of odds, right? And I know that as long as I continue to just do exactly what I'm doing right now, right? I will be able to suffer the storm, take, you know, pay my little dues and taxes to the market, which we all have to do. And then I'll be in for the next good trend, which right now the trend is to the downside. So I'm looking forward to generating good signals off of this. Uh, obviously, we, we kind of got to drop off how many long signals we take on altcoins when the market cycle is a little bit different. Uh, but in general, when a lot of them, we're just kind of in an awkward transition phase where a lot of them are going from like, hey, we're kind of bullish. This is like last gasp desperation thing. And now we're going to switch back into bearish mode, most likely, in which case we're going to get uh, far less signals because we're going to be way less active on Binance, which is good. We hedge up our risk on there, move into USDT, and just wait. Uh, let's see here. Jose Canete says, hey, Justin, how do you decide to take profits? Is it based off of percentages? No, um, it's based off of Quadrigo ATR, which is my own application of the average true range theory. Um, Ricky Thompson says, why can't Binance do this? You have to go to a third party to get these features. You're absolutely right, man. BitMEX, Bybit have all these features implemented, hard coded onto their platform. Um, it's actually extremely irresponsible of Binance to have focused more on let's get more pairs and let's do more publicity and let's make CZ's, you know, you know, I don't know, let's tone CZ's abs instead of uh, focusing on the actual experience of their trading platform because they haven't, right? Uh, I Newton, thank you so much, man. Beard is looking better every day. Thank you, brother. Putting a lot of work into it, man. Oil, bomb. Oh yeah. Young Johnny Three Frame says takes a loss to appreciate the wins. You're absolutely right, man. What is R to R risk to reward ratio? So how much are you risking compared to what is your like what is the what is the maximum amount that you might lose if your stop loss gets hit compared to what is your maximum gain if your win gets hit? Justin, what does it mean when the stochastic RSI is in the critical zone? It means you have accidentally clicked on the wrong indicator. What you meant to click on was Ichimoku. Let's go see. So critical zone, uh, by critical zone, do you mean above 80 or below 20? So when, when the stochastic RSI is above 80, it's denoting that price is overbought, meaning that um, statistically, based on the momentum of, of, of previous price, 
price is likely to reverse because the trend is likely exhausted at this point in time. Um, unfortunately, the Stochastic RSI can remain oversold for quite some time, and it just doesn't really get you in, you know, when, when you need to be getting in, in my opinion. Elijah Finch, what's going on, brother? Um, but sorry, I don't mean to demean your question. You, you asked a legitimate question about uh, the RSI. So uh, the RSI is an oscillator um, that, that can go into extremes as well. So above 100, it can go below zero as well. Um, and it, it doesn't really mean anything except for the fact that price is extremely overbought and extremely oversold. Uh, I don't use risk to reward ratios, it's hard. I mean, technically by all rights, you can derive an R to R from, uh, from my, from Quadrigo ATR. So let's do that. Because visualizing something is just going to be a whole lot easier. So let's say we hit TP3. And set our stop right here. Two to one. But ideally, ideally, this is where our take profit act, our trailing take profit activates. And ideally, we're looking to capture the meat of a trend. All right. So, for example, on a movement like this, we want to let price run as high as humanly possible. Right. And we only want to get out when we've gotten that trend broken because we're trend following traders. So when we set a predetermined R to R, we're basically saying that we don't want any part in all the price appreciation above our first take profit. Now, the way that I use take the way that I've devised these take profit levels in cryptocurrency, I think they work quite well. The way that I trade on a daily basis. But, you know, and there's nothing wrong with trading with R to R, but that just means you are always going to be using predetermined targets and predetermined stop losses. Now, we always have a predetermined first take profit and we always have a predetermined uh, stop loss. And it's actually an asymmetric risk to reward ratio. But that's because of the potential upside of the way that we trade. Oh, no problem, crypto. Slice of life. Yeah, it's just it's just an extreme of overbought and oversold. In my personal humble opinion, eh. now there is like one decent thing you can do with a stochastic RSI, and you can do this with pretty much any indicator. <laughs> you can do this with pretty much any indicator. Um, and what you can do is you can do a couple things. So the first thing that's going to immediately make this a better indicator is you just do this. Just put a line on there and set that line to 50. And instead of like caring at all about <laughs> entering into a trade when price goes overbought or oversold, uh, look to take a long when you have confirmation and the stochastic RSI goes above the 50 line, right? So let's use volume for an example, right? Uh, no guarantees, because I don't like stochastic RSI. So let's look how we... I want to see volume here. Okay, so here is a long signal from Stochastic. And look, uh, I want to contrast this against Minx. No long signal from Minx. And that's a failure. Oh, let's see here. So here. Stochastic RSI doesn't really give you another signal. Minx gives you a long signal right here, and that's a win. I'm sure in some capacity. Uh, Minx gets you into a short here. Stochastic RSI gets you in here. Here. Minx gets you in this long. That's probably a loss. But Stochastic RSI gets you in way higher. So even though this, this trade's a loss, it's all good. 
And then stochastic doesn't really get you back into this trade because if you're trading recross over, sure, but then you got, you'd have to ignore all this chop, right? Because the stochastic RSI would have gotten you back in if you're using the stochastic as a continuation cross as well. Whereas Minx doesn't really give you that, that wibble wobble, right? You just get into a long here with Minx and you catch that whole move. Let's see, so Minx tells you to go long here and the stochastic RSI actually gives you a little bit better entry here. So that's okay. And then we catch that move. That's a good trade. Get a continuation long here on the same candle where, well, the stoke gets you long here, maybe, but then gets you out here. And then get you along here on the same candle as Minx, which is a good trade, yeah, because price does run up quite a bit. Uh, let's see here. And then tells you to go short here, but you're not allowed to. And then right here on this candle, we could have taken a short on Minx. That would have been good. Of course, we can't short metal, but point is the same. Uh, let's see, long signal here, no volume. Right, yeah, not really. We're probably out of this trade. Neither stochastic nor mix would have gotten you in there. No, yeah, we would have taken this one though. That's a good trade. Damn, Minx got us into that. Like a champ. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, uh, stochastic didn't get us into that trade. Stochastic got us in way later. Stochastic got us in here. And then we get a signal to go short on Minx here. All right, the stochastic R side gives you no such signal. Tells you to go short here, but you're not allowed to. And then yeah, got a lot of continuation signals. Look how much chop there is though with the stochastic R side continuation signals. Just not a very good indicator, man. But we did just make it like a million times better than than a reversal indicator. Right, so let's look at let's look at this. If you're using this as a reversal indicator, okay. So I would have told you to let's actually see where you get the signal, right here. Would have told you to go short here. That's not a good one. And then I would have told you to go short here, because it's when the stochastic RSI comes back inside below 80 after being above it that you actually take the short. Um. Here. Yeah, I'd still have you in a long. Uh, let's see. It called this one okay. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes reversal trades are going to work out. So, actually, no, sorry. Where did it get you in a short? Let's actually see here real quick. No, that's above. So, on this candle on the 1st of April, that's still okay short, I guess. All right, so where would we have gone long on the stochastic on this candle right there? That yeah, looks like a terrible trade. And then we would have gone long again here. The stochastic would add you going long here. That sucks. And then we would have gone long here on this candle. And maybe that's a winner going long here. Doesn't really matter if you go here or here. Same price. Doesn't really matter. Uh, maybe that's a winner. Probably not. Probably get your stop loss hit. Maybe. Yeah, for other reasons beyond what I just showed you, I, I really detest this indicator. It's just not very good. Yeah, that's the other thing I was going to say is uh, let's actually let's actually make a script here. And I think the is the stochastic RSI. No, the stochastic RSI isn't a built in function of fine. <clears throat> uh, Stoke is and then I can just do an RSI of Stoke. But then I'd have to define RSI write it out version three style, which I don't really feel like doing. That sounds like a pain in the butt. I could do it real quick. All right, yeah, Stoke, yeah, but not Stoke RSI. So just Stoke. Okay, so we'll do Stoke, high, low, length, and yeah, close, minus low, low length, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so yeah, source, high, low, and then length. 
Let's see if we can't do this real quick. Yeah, because we'll just do Stoke as the source calling an RSI with a look back period. Okay. So we can do this. Not too bad. Uh, where are we? Metal? All right. So we're going to name this uh, Trash. Um, overlay equals false. Uh, we're going to do um, SS. ST equals stochastic, lows, high, low, and then what's the typical setting for stochastic? Oh. <laughs> 14. And then we'll do an RSI, or so we'll do RR equals RSI of ST and um, Oh, 14 and 14, I guess, is this. Yeah, 14, we'll do 14. And then plot RR. Plot RR. Dial equals line. Line width equals three. Uh, color equals green. Line, why not? And then we want a moving average. So we'll do uh, input equals title equals uh, D. Is it D? Yeah, it's D, right? Yeah, it's D. Um, type integer uh, default value equals three and val equals one. So then we'll do uh, DD equals SMA of RR uh, um, uh, length equals input RR and length. Okay, and then plot DD. Dial equals line, line width equals two, color equals uh, aqua. Uh, maybe that works. We're going to find out. Oh, whoops. There we go. Uh, mismatched character N, line two. Oh, quotes. Scare quotes. because I use an integer. All right, so we'll just get rid of default value. All right? What the fuck? Oh, what the fuck? That's the problem. My bad. Told you guys, I didn't want to fucking go through all this. But whatever. There we go. Thank you so much. Add to chart. There we go. And we've got our fucking stochastic RSI. So one thing I was going to do is... Okay, so here's what, we, what I wanted to do. So another thing that we can do is instead of... To make this better, what we can actually do is... Uh, do like a... Uh, so let's do like something like TT equals an EMA of freaking RR and like 10 or something, right? This is often pretty good. And then we'll plot TT. TT. Dial equals line, line width equals one, color equals red. Okay. Okay, cool. Now we've got a red line which is, I guess we could have just changed K, but you want that you want that other line in there too to kind of act as your early extra continuation signals. Um, so now what you have is, you know, we can actually like, I guess we could have put it uh, true or false, but anyways. Um, now what we can do is we can actually try to take trades when either, so instead of having, instead of having such a quick line, you can have a much slower line and take trades when either both or one crosses over and this is gonna really act as your entry and exit. And typically you're gonna have much better results with something like that if you put a moving average on there. So like for example, uh, you would have taken along here, uh, let's see here, along here, okay. 
and price goes good and you wait until price closes below to exit right here that's a good trade right so that gets you in here see right here price closes above the red line and then you wait until price closes below the red line or you can actually use an early exit so that would have got it would have got you out on the same candle because price closes below the blue and the red on the same candle um and then yep and then you forget all this wibble wobble what price is doing with the slow line or the quick line and then you take a trade here so stochastic rsi actually gets you in there and you're in this trade and you're in this trade and you're in this trade uh now if you're using the quick early exit you actually would have got kicked out you gotta got punted from this trade on the 29th so right before the big bullish candle so again, why even though it's not going to work out all the time, if you would would have, would have waited until price closed below on the 30th, you would have been exiting at the very top. So. No problem, brother. I use Chop, LRSI, V1 instead of Stochastic and RSI. That's not too bad, yeah. Bitcoin 2 up 65,000%. Do I think it will stay there or dump massively? Most likely dump massively. BTC 2 is the real Bitcoin? No, it's just a shitcoin, bro. This song right now or the one that was playing previously? This is BaseX featuring Easton. I'll have the usual. The previous song was HD Ben Dope, Bird. I just programmed a better indicator than most people use in less than 10 minutes. That and that, listen. That wasn't my best work. I was done quite in haste. Normally my code's pretty darn clean. Because I'm not really good at I was never really good at programming. I don't have a background in it. I've I only know Pine. Like I don't know JavaScript. I mean, to be honest with you, I've like learned little tricks over time. Like for example, uh, if we look at OBS, like this thing right. This thing right here, the little, uh, the little, uh, the little ASIC thing, uh, I, I figured that out by modifying the JavaScript uh, in Streamlabs OBS. So I just modified the the URL file, the, the jar URL file, and found my own image of an ASIC and cut that little hole in it and did some modifications in Photoshop and it works pretty nicely. L L Pel L Pelos Velada, thank you so much for the uh, for the follow over there on Twitch. Wayne Art. What's up, Caribbean Crypto Show? You know, listen, I, I, listen, I just have to comment on this, right? And I don't want to hate on any of you guys because if you are genuine human people, like, and, and you're not being paid, uh, and you're not like, cause they're like straight up, there is a paid campaign right now to spread propaganda. So if you're not that, and, and you are a genuine human person with concepts and ideas that are just different from the mainstream, that's totally fine. So am I, but I I've seen a lot of this increase lately in people talking about Bitcoin SV, how it's the real Bitcoin, whatever the fuck that means, right? It's, it's, it's a, what the fuck does that mean? Um, about you know this lately this BTC two thing and again I can understand talking about something that massively pumps because stuff happens, um, but I mean here's the thing that you got to understand. I'm gonna need to hear some like actual clear concise logical make sense arguments that are gonna incorporate economics, philosophy, politics, uh, the fact that Bitcoin has an established user base right now. 
uh, the fact of what would actually be in the financial and economic best interest of miners, of what would be in the best economic and financial interest of hodlers, in the best economic interest of the development team. I'm going to need to see actual code reviews, GitHub pull, GitHub pull requests, things of that nature for why SV or any of these other concepts have superior development or more intelligent designers and programmers and more support worldwide than Bitcoin, uh, what you guys would refer to as Bitcoin Core. I'm going to need to hear like actual genuine arguments because all I've seen so far is like randos coming to my chat and over on Twitter and on, you know, Reddit and things like this. And they post in like all caps and they just say absolute garbage nonsense. That doesn't make any sense. That sounds like something like my, my nine-year-old son would spout, would write on the wall in crayon when I take away his iPad. Okay. So I mean, I'm totally down to have the conversation, but you guys need to do better than something is the real Bitcoin or watch this pump. That has nothing to do with foundational economics, okay? Uh, guys, go read your Murray Rothbard. Guys, go read your Mises, okay? Money is only going to be one thing, right? There's only one thing that will ever be money, right? Right now, that's the dollar. In the future, it will be a cryptocurrency. I am assured of that. I know for 100% that barring alien invasion, nuclear explosion, global catastrophe, the ozone layer leaving... Uh, or Mars crashing into us, the future of money is going to be a digital currency of some fashion. Now, I've done my research extensively. I do not know of anything that is superior economically, technologically, uh, security-wise than Bitcoin. What all you guys, so just to make sure we're very clear, the ticker BTC developed by the Bitcoin Core development team, right? That you would use the Bitcoin Core client to access and spread across the network, right? It is the strongest chain. It has the most miners. It has the most active users. It also has the highest market cap by market capitalization. So I'm going to need to hear some extensive argumentation, some documented support and truth and proof Though in any way, shape, or form is going to give me the identities, not, not only the identities, and not anonymity is cool, but explain the development to me, explain to me why it's superior beyond SegWit is garbage, explain to me why SegWit's bad, explain it to me, technically, because I'm not stupid, I understand technicals, explain to me why it's fucking SegWit coin, why SegWit is bad when it improved the efficiency of the network, why Bitcoin Cash, ABC, and Roger Veer and Jihan Wu, and their all entire shady bunch of, of Bitmain entrepreneurs, why their, why their decision to massively raise the block limit, which was an unelegant, inelegant solution to scaling in the first place, is better than something that is more developed, why the Lightning Network is bad. Explain to me technically why these things fail, because everything that I've heard falls apart under the slightest scrutiny. My nine-year-old writes on the wall in Grant. He does if I take his iPad. So anyways, guys, love you guys. It's been a good time. We've laughed. We've cried. We've loved. We've laughed. So anyways, guys, I just want to thank you for joining me for another exciting episode of Breaking Bitcoin Market Update. Of course, I have been your host, Justin Wise, lead analyst and senior mentor at CrackingCryptocurrency.com. Thank you so much for spending your time with me this afternoon. If you are a new person to the show, if you've somehow come across us and you're not sure where you are, I guarantee stick around. You're going to like what you hear here. Click on the subscribe button, hit the notification bell because we are live every single day from noon to two central daylight time, five to seven, stand, or excuse me, central daylight time on the weekends, guys. If you are on Twitch or DLive, make sure to give us those follows or the subscriptions. It definitely supports the show, and we highly appreciate that. And if you're over on Facebook, make sure to share us to your family, your friends, even people you don't like. People need to see this information. It's very important. All right, guys. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, sarcastic remarks, and or death threats, there is a comment section down below that I would be pleased to communicate with you in. If it is a relevant, good question, I will try to get back to you within 48 hours. Or you can hit me up on the Discord or email us at contact at crackingcryptocurrency.com. If you would like to benefit from trading education and experience, if you guys would like access to our proprietary indicators, our private Discord community, our educational content, our Pathways to Profit course, our premium webinars, our database library, as well as access to our signals and setups, you can, of course, check the link at the top of the screen or down in the description, premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com. I'd be pleased to help you guys along and be a guide and what can often be a maze for new traders and a sea of information that really just genuinely sucks out there for the most part. So anyways, guys, I've been Justin Wise. Until tomorrow, trade safely. I'll catch you in the next one.